Good morning. Good morning. Today is Takeaway Tuesday. I am so excited. Hopefully uh, you are able to join me from your place uh, live. I am from Toronto, well, just east of Toronto in a place called Ajax. I am so glad that you're here to join me. And we are going to be doing some stuff uh, and it's using the Changing Leaves stamp set and dies. Now, I know currently it's on back order and it should be in either today or tomorrow in the, or, or sometime this week. Um, so I don't know exactly when uh, the last I heard it was supposed to be sometime this week. It is going to be so much fun. It is a really, really great uh, little bundle that you can get. Um, it is a hybrid die and embossing folder, which means you place your um, the die on the inside of the embossing folder and then run it through and it cuts it and embosses it at the same time. And I'm going to be using, along with the Changing Leaf stamp set, I'm going to be using the dies that go with it. Now you'll notice I have them in this little container. It just makes it easier uh, to use. Um, I highly recommend that if you have anything that is leaf related, this will also work too. So use what you have. Um, you will need some dies, leaf dies for today's card. So make sure that you have that there. Um, uh, I love this set. It's um, I've used it so much. Uh, you can tell it is very well used. My embossing folder is well used. It is cracking a little bit in the middle, but that just tells you how much I've been using it. And I've been using it for classes and a whole bunch of stuff. Now, sometimes you'll get an embossing folder and some people will say to me, you know what? My embossing folders are kind of like they're bending a little bit or they're cracking at the hinges. The reason for that is because when you make your sandwich in the uh, cut and boss machine, it is either really, really tight, and that causes when the machine when the embossing folder goes through, and it's like super tight, it will kind of fold the embossing folder. It just means that you have too many shims in there. Um, maybe take a look. Uh, is there a possibility you can reduce the shims and stuff like that? And that will uh, lengthen the life of your embossing folder. When it cracks at the hinge like this, that's okay. It still works as long as it uh, still is put together. Again, it is the pressure from the machine. Take a look at the shims that you're using. One thing I found out about these hybrid ones. Um, so this is a a thick 3D embossing folder. So these embossing folders are a little thicker than normal. So they take, um, when you place them through, you have to stack your shims a certain way. So you got to follow that along. Um, with the hybrid, it, there's a little bit more pressure in there because of the dies. So it makes it a little thicker and then you put the cardstock in. So that's why you may get a little uh, bowing on the embossing folder. Um, just take care and be aware of that. There is a way to put the embossing folder through your machine to reduce this hinge damage to the edge. So just be aware of that. I just want to kind of bring that up because somebody had mentioned that to me. And it doesn't mean that there's anything really wrong with the embossing folder. It's just that you need to be aware of that. And it does possibly happen. And it's just because the the layers are just really, really thick, okay? Just to be aware. So, on, and if you have a brand new embossing machine, the, the rollers inside will squeeze it really tight. You know, it's like when we're all young, our muscles are all nice and tight. When we get a little bit older, they kind of loosen up a little. Our embossing machines are kind of like that. Anyway, that's my spiel on embossing folders, which was totally unplanned. Thank you for joining me. My name is Tina Kavergich and I am Northern Stamper. If you have any questions, please drop me an email at northernstamper at gmail.com. You can always comment below. Good morning. I have my friend Liz on. She is my moderator and she is watching your comments. So if you have any questions, please drop them in the comment. Either myself or Liz will uh, comment back to you um, on that. So uh, I just wanted to let you know today's uh, so we know what today's Takeaway Tuesday is, and I've posted the items that we're going to be, whoops,
tips creating today. Yeah, sneak peek there if you're quick on, on today's card. So I posted that earlier. All right. I wanted to let you know, Takeaway Tuesday for October is all about designer series paper. And I have made a ton of cards using designer series paper. And sadly, I have so many cards that I'm not sure which one I'm going to be using for Takeaway Tuesday, but they are so many. I wanted to show you one that I am using with is just DSP. So look at this. So this is the little DSP. Okay, I'll bring it a little closer. This is one of the DSPs. There it is right there. It is so super cute. And this is the card I made with it using DSP. So we're focusing on DSP. Now you'll notice that this sentiment is not a stamp sentiment. This comes from the ephemera pack of sentiments, which my goodness, run out and grab those right away before they sell out. Holy cow, those are fabulous. If you watch my ephemera packs and I talk about sentiments, last time, I, they're a game changer. They really help. So they're wonderful. So we're on um, in October for Takeaway Tuesday. We're using DSP. And if you want to join in on that and I pre-cut everything for you, it's $25. Comment below or drop me an email. I wanted to show you some other things using designer series paper. Like this is one of the designer series paper. This is very simple to, to make up. Is you just cut the paper and add a sentiment, maybe a little ribbon and some bling. And there you go absolutely fantastic for fall this is lovely now you'll notice this color that i use this is wild wheat ink and the reason i chose that is because there's a little bit of wild wheat ink in this paper and i wanted to pick it up so fabulous fabulous paper designer series paper is the way to go and so talking about um takeaway tuesday I wanted to show you some other cards that I created using the changing leaves. So this month, um, somebody wanted a wedding card and I created a wedding card for them. This is very simple. This is soft sea foam with white embossed. Everything is embossed. The white is embossed. The, the leaves are embossed, right? So this is really, really great. So I wanted to show you particularly the dyes, what you can create with this. Very simple. I love this. Simple but stunning and you notice the um embellishments here they're the the little gold ones okay along with those uh, sentiments from the ephemera packs run out and grab these gold ones they go with everything fantastic i just love them here's another one i was kind of going around with i used two ribbons um this is fully embossed on vanilla and i wanted to highlight a little bit of colors i'm not sure if i like this one you let me know. Comment below what you think about this one. If I should have just left it uh, very vanilla or not. Again, the gold embellishments. Fantastic wild wheat for the ink. I did a little blending brushes on these to try and pick up the colors from there. I don't know. I don't know if I like the colors. It's uh, kind of interesting. It's just always fun to work with. So that is the changing leaves. Remember we were talking about Takeaway Tuesday in the catalog. Join me. So we know in October, I've lost my little paper for that, for October, is the DSP, remember? DSP, Takeaway Tuesday in October. In November, is called a little bit festive. Now the reason I'm going with that one, this one is filled with ephemera pack items. Fantastic, and DSP, and we're gonna be using all of that in all of November. That is way down the line, and you may think, why get going on Christmas cards? But you know what? It is time to do Christmas cards now. If you're a card maker, you know that that's the time is right now. Comment below if you have started your Christmas cards. I have. And uh, geez, you know what? It's going to be Christmas before we know it. All right, let's get started on today's card. I've already posted what the items that we're going to be using. Now, what I had done, the reason for these cards this month is I went through my some of my stash and I wanted to use up some of the items that I have in my stash that is not getting any love. So what I decided to do, and now this was an older um, common, uh, combination package of uh, cardstock bases. 
and envelopes. And I kind of thought that this Calypso Coral was really nice for fall colors. And that's what I wanted to use. Always look at what you have in your stash, okay? Sometimes we need to add a few stamp sets or bundles to enhance what we have. So and that's what I wanted to do. So what I did is I take that and what I want to do is this envelope is absolutely stunning, and but I just need a little piece of this. So oh, what I'm gonna do is I need to cut off a piece of this inside. I think I'm just gonna take it from the top here because it's only a little strip that we need. Or if you want, if you have any designer series paper that is kind of fall color and, and matches your cardstock, go right ahead. We got a couple of scraps that we're going to be doing some die cutting out of and a piece of a basic white. Now that is not very many items compared to last week. If you remember last week, we had a lot of stuff. What I want to do is I'm going to start stamping on this piece of white cardstock. Maybe I should bring you in a little bit more. I'm not sure. I'm afraid to touch the camera. And what I'm going to be doing is going to be using pretty peacock ink calypso coral and lost lagoon now remember the reason i'm using those colors is because that is what is in the dsp and i think that's what's going to make it pop a little bit more so those are the colors in there so that's what i'm going to use for my card and what i'm going to do is i'm going to be using the stamped images from the changing leaves you can also use whatever leaf set that you have i'm going to be stamping some of these leaf images on this paper okay so let's get started let's see if I can without losing anybody seeing if I can get you a little closer Oop. bear with me okay I do apologize oh no I do apologize here we go at least it's a little closer so what I want to do is I'm gonna stamp some of the leaves right along here on this basic white and I am actually going to start with the largest image, which is this, this leaf right here. So I'm going to start with that. Okay, so you're going to see I'm going to kind of place it on there. But what I need to do is I need to kind of mask some of the bottom because I don't want it to come all the way down. Oh, is it out of focus? It's out of focus. Hold on. Whoop. I found a trick. There we go. There we go. That's the that's the trick. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to mask some of the bottom portion. Let's get this here. I'm going to bring this along. And I'm whoops, I'm also out of the my goodness, I'm having one of those days. Okay. I'm masking it along the bottom because on the bottom I'm going to be placing a sentiment and I want that on there. So so I've masked the bottom portion. It's roughly about an inch. Okay. And now what I could do is I can stamp my image kind of carefully across. Now we're going to need a block. Ooh, that's not a big enough block. Always make sure you have the right size block. Okay. Like I said, I'm going to start with the largest image and I'm going to use my... What color is this? Lost Lagoon. I'm going to take my Lost Lagoon. So let's ink it up. I'm going to stamp on here just to make sure. Oh, yeah. Okay. I guess I just didn't see it. Okay. I'm going to ink it up. And I'm going to put some leaf on here. And I want to bring it up as high as I can. Because I want to fill that area. So I have that one here. Now, I'm not going to stamp another large leaf like that. I'm going to ch change my colors and my leaf. The next color I'm going to use is Pretty Peacock. And I'm going to go with this funky kind of leaf right here. Okay. Oh, Christine, that's very smart. Christine was saying she, instead of cutting into the uh, a new envelope, she's just going to use the piece that we had from last week. And that is absolutely a brilliant idea. Um, if you used some of it from last week, that is good. That's why we keep our scraps, ladies. Okay, so I'm going to take this piece and I'm going to try 
and stamp, but I don't want to over stamp it. So I'm going to try and get as close to I can. I might have to stamp a little bit on it. And I'm going to fill that in. Okay, got that stamped. Oh, look at that. Okay, now I'm going to change colors again. Right, so I got those two and I'm going to go with Calypso Coral. And I'm going with the next leaf, which is this kind of, uh, what do you call it? A, a maple leaf? I think that's a maple leaf. Pretty sure that's a maple leaf. And I'm going to stamp in Calypso Coral. And it's going to be peeking in from the side as much as I can. Bring it in as close as I can. That looks fantastic. That looks really good, even though it's masks. And where's my envelope? So again, you can see the colors are all matching in. Now I can take away the uh, post-it notes. I think when we get older, we seem to forget some of the words. So everything's going to be a thing or a doodad. So where it masks, it is a, a straight line. So I can stamp a sentiment on the bottom here. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to look for one of the sentiments and I'm going to place it on there. Okay. And I want don't want to bring it up right to where the edge is. I need to bring it a little closer to the bottom because remember, we're going to put a piece of DSP right across here. So I got to leave space for that piece of DSP. Let's get the ink. Now, I want you to look at these colors and we want to use the darkest color for our sentiment. Pop quiz, what color would you use? Okay, so I'm going to ink it up. I'm waiting for the comment. I want to make sure that uh, it's like class. Ladies, raise your hand. No, don't raise your hand. But we're going to ink up in the darkest color. And that will make the sentiment really pop out. Oh, Jones got it. Exactly. We're going to be using Pretty Peacock. So let's place that on there. And that really stands out against those other colors. So I don't know about you, but I like to use the darkest color um, from the DSP that we're using. And I use that on the sentiment. If you don't have that, you can always use black. And it looks just as well. So if you have, yes, uh, last week's envelope, let's cut a piece of DSP. I do not. So I'm going to be using this one from this envelope here. I'm going to be cutting a little strip. And let's see. I just realized this has beveled edges on the end. So I'm going to make it about one inch. Let's see what happens when I do it at one inch. Oh, did you see that? I took that away. All right. Oh, that's okay. So there we go. So this is really thick. It kind of overlaps a lot of the image that I want. So always take a look, right? So you can see it's a little thick. I think it should be a little bit thinner. So, and it's good that it's a little longer. I'm actually going to take it down a little bit more. Okay, going to take that. That was one inch. I'm going to take it down to three quarters of an inch. Everybody's card is going to be a little bit different. So you kind of eyeball it. Your, oh my goodness. Yourself and you can find out. That's a little bit better. It's a little bit better. Okay. Maybe just a smidgen more. Like I said, just keep kind of working at it. Everybody's card will be different. And I just wanted to show you the process on how I get to what makes me happy with my card. Doesn't mean that you'll have to follow exactly. Oh, there we go. I think that's a lot better. That is not so over much uh, like the other one. So there, there we go. So that is a little bit better. Okay. All right. And I'm going to glue that down. Oh, my goodness. Okay. I'm going to glue that down. Uh, hopefully I have some glue. Okay, glue this down. 
I'm going to put that on there just like that. Because it's a little bit longer, I can snip the ends off. This is a much simpler card than we did last week. And this would work really well with anything. So take a look in your stash and see what you have in your area. Oh, shoot. Okay. Remember we talked about die cutting? <laughs> I forgot about the die cuts. I have some die cuts and these leaves are supposed to go underneath this piece of, of uh, DSP. Oh, my goodness. That just happens. So... What I did is this embossing folder, I put this in and I put my, where'd it go? My piece of pretty peacock cardstock in and I ran it through and die cut one leaf out. Okay, I'm gonna take a look. There's the one leaf, there we go. That's the maple leaf. Now it is cut off on the bottom a little bit, but that's okay. Um, the piece that I used was a little large, so I had some extras left over. So I'm going to be using them too. What I also needed to do with the crushed curry was die cut some of the leaves out. And the little bit of little, what is this, little berries. I was so excited with the card and the DSP, I forgot to add these little guys on. I do apologize. There we go going to pop these guys out. I die cut these earlier. Oh, look at that, how that turned out. That is really nice. Okay. We're going to pop out the leaves. Bear with me because I have my pokey tool is on the other end of the craft room. And don't forget to hit the little release holes that are in the dies that will help push out the cardstock a little bit easier. Now, when you're pulling them out and you have very intricate dies like this, just be careful when you pull them out. Just take your time. I find that the more intricate ones, the ones that are, are really thin, they either stay in the die I need a little bit of help coming out. Oh, what a mess. So just take your time. Don't force them out or they will rip. Okay. So I got my dies. There they are. There's the crushed curry. They look fantastic. And my little leaves. So what I'm going to do is kind of put these die leaves behind it. And a little bit over here and what's going to happen is these guys are going to fit kind of right under that dsp there we go this little guy oops let's put him in i had a bit of a boo-boo on him he seemed to be cut off a little bit all right i haven't glued them yet because i just kind of want to lay them out a little bit oh that looks actually pretty good I'm going to uh, glue those down and then I will glue back my DSP, my boo-boo. You know what? Sometimes we all make mistakes, but uh, you know what? It's okay. I can fix it. All right. I'm going to add some glue to these guys to glue it down. A little glue dot. Oops, to hold the little berries on the top of the leaf because it's a really thin, thin image. I'm going to glue dot behind the leaf to glue down those little bits of leaf dies. Okay, Let's bring it up like that. And I think I'm going to add just one more. Tuck it in behind and I'm going to stagger it a little bit so the heights are a little bit different. There we go. Now I could actually add in this one piece, but I think that's a little too much. All right, that's good. Let's glue this guy down. Oh, it's time to get a new glue bottle. We're going to tuck it under the DSP 
There we go. And we will put down the DSP with a glue dot. Because I made a boo-boo. The only person that will know that I made a boo-boo is me and the person getting this card if you're watching the video. Okay. Oh. All right. What I need to do now is just add it onto the card base. If you want, if you really want it to pop, you can add a very small mat of pretty peacock behind that. It is totally up to you. But I'm going to leave it on this just the way it is. Going to glue it down. There we go. And all that we have left, look at that, is I'm just going to take a look for some embellishments. What have we got? Oh, look, I have these leftover brass butterflies. I think they're still available. I think these were fantastic. I just love these. I'm just going to add some of these guys in. This guy is, these brass butterflies are still available. I'm going to be sad when these guys go. Because I think they're so pretty. Don't want. Oh, one trick about when you're adding directional embellishments. When I mean like which way that butterfly is kind of flying. You don't really, want, when it's on an edge, you want them to kind of fly into your focal point. So I want to focus this one is going to be going this way. This one is going to be going that way. So you kind of want them to float in as opposed to like going out. So I'm just going to show you. So if I have this one might be going out on the end, but I kind of want most of it floating in. So it's all about flow on where you put in your directional embellishments. Oh, that's so pretty. Okay. So there is today's card. You can always add a little bit of Wink of Stella on this if you want. There you go. Don't forget to join me next week. I'm going to be doing all week is all about leaves. It's leaf week and it's in a in a very it's in an, a public group and I just didn't want to overload this one page. So there's today's card. What do you think? Were you able to keep up? And I do apologize about the boo-boo. Anyways, let me know what you think below. And I'm going to say a proper goodbye. So hold on. Whoop. There we go. Hi. Thank you for joining me today on Takeaway Tuesday. I hope it's given you some ideas what to use with the changing leaves. Whoop. And if you have any questions, please drop me a comment below or northernstamper at gmail.com. Thank you for so much for joining me today. And let's get those Christmas cards started and get them out. Take care and have a great day.